Hello, I'm Paul Belisle, head instructor for Japan Karate Do Rokai New England, and today we're going to talk a bit about Bo Kihon. So not only the most basic Bo techniques, but the foundational elements of those techniques that will allow you to perform them properly. Um, so with that in mind, to start, I'd like to talk about grip to begin with. So in Shindo Jina Naru, we have a number of bokata, three. We have several kumibo exercises, which are two-person, um, almost two-person kata, but they're two-person exercises. And uh, the majority of them you will find uh, what we're going to call a mixed grip. Okay, so one hand palm up, the other hand palm down uh, in this fashion uh, with the right hand forward. Now, there's no reason you couldn't fight southpaw or do any of these kata uh, in mirror image, but the basic version is with the right hand forward, mirror image, uh, or mixed grip rather, uh, in this fashion. The other grip that you'll find is a double overhand grip like this. So you'll see this uh, within the kumibo exercises, along with this one side of the kumibo exercises are here, the other person is here. Um, shushi no kon dai, shushi no kon shou, use this grip. Sunakaki no kon uses this grip. Okay, so you will see both. All right, now, the hands, uh, in terms of their orientation on the bow, is only part of what's important when it comes to establishing your grip on this piece of equipment. The distance be between your hands is very, very important for a couple of reasons. Number one, uh, or at least number one in my head, is making sure that your, your grip is always uh, maintained on the weapon, right? If your hands are spread out, too far, right? You will see certain positions, say for instance a downward strike here, where because of the extension I can no longer keep my fingers wrapped around the bow in a way that preserves my grip on it, okay? And in particular something dynamic like a strike, this is a problem, right? As this makes contact I'm in danger of having my hands come off the bow and this is not a good position to be in if you are fighting somebody else who ha also has a bow. One of the th key things that someone fighting you will want to do is get you to lose your grip because it opens you up and it's harder for you to defend yourself and counterattack. So maintaining the grip is critical and being too long is one of the best ways to lose your grip, right? So you don't want to be too long. And then secondly, bow in terms of how it functions uh, mirrors uh, what we do in empty hands. So it uses hikite principles, meaning that when we strike uh, in this fashion, right, we're not pushing with this hand so much as pulling with this hand to get the effect that we want out here at the end of the bow. And if we're too long, again, this becomes difficult, right? You're just not set up to have the proper lever arm, to use some physics terminology, uh, to deliver a sharp uh, strike or block or um, or uh, strike or block. <laughs> we'll leave it there. Okay. All right. So how do we get your hands in the right position? What is the right um, distance between your hands when you're on the bow? If you're standing thus, right, and you have your hands in double overhand grip and just stand naturally, ideally, you would be correct if your thumbs, or this the, the thumb side of your hand, right, is aligned with the outside of your thighs. This is this is correct. Okay? Same would be true if you're in mixed grip. In this case, you'd have the pinky side and the thumb side, and they would be just here. Okay? Now, um, the question then becomes: how do you consistently get to this position? So when we do kumibo exercises, when we do kata, there is a series of movements that we go through in order to bow in and to establish proper distance um, for your hands on the bow. And one of the ways that we measure this, and we'll go through the steps in just a second, is uh, to leverage the fact that for most people, the distance between the hip bone and the shoulder happens to be just about this distance here between the outside of the thighs. 
So as an example, we will we'll use the, uh, the re and yue position for sunakake no kon uh, to illustrate this. So we would bow in, re, onegaishimasu, sunakake no kon. And then we would bring the hands around in this position to get one hand by the shoulder, one hand by the hip. And then as we step out, I'm also going to rotate my right hand, okay, to get the overhand grip. And ha, huh, we've lined up the way we want to. The other kata use variations on this, but they all come back to this idea here that this, this point to this point is the same distance as here to here. And so we'll use that to set the hands as we begin a kata. Okay? All right. Um, let's go through the steps of that now so that you can see this process because it's a little confusing and there's a couple of fine points that we really want to make sure that we call out. Okay, so to begin, uh, in Shinto Jinanuru, when we bow, the bow does not move. Okay, you will see other styles where the bow will be in this position and move when, when the uh, practitioner, when the Kratika bows. You also see styles with the bow straight up in this position also usually moves when you do that. Our position is 45, so the bow resting in the palm, nestled between the, the elbow and the, and the side of the body, like this. And when we bow, our bow does not move. So, on the right, on the gaishimas. Notice the bow is not moved, come back up, okay? So, one more time, right, on the gaishimas and back up. Notice the bow is not moving. Okay, so we're going to set the grip now like we're about to begin either Sunakaka no Kon or Side B in the Kumibo exercises. Okay, um, so from here, we'll bow. Okay, now um, the feet should be, you're in Masubi Dachi, as you start to come to Yoi, the feet will uh, come together as they often do with empty hand kata, with te kata. Okay, so first step is the right hand is going to come to the left shoulder. The feet will close, okay, here. Now, as the right hand comes to the left shoulder, the bow is vertical. Okay, bring it across your body out here. And at that point, bring the left hand out and let it just, let the bow just come to it. Okay, if you do this smoothly, it's very simple. Don't try to over guide it. Don't try to be tight with your hands. Relax right to here. Okay. So the left hand is about oh, just about straight out. You have a little bit of can be here, can be here. Um, not super critical at this point. Okay. Now from here, I'm going to take my right hand to my right hip and my left hand to my right shoulder here. Okay. Now, I've got the hands lined up, okay, so that they are leveraging the fact that right hand is down by the hip, left hand is up by the shoulder, so that when I step out, okay, and bring the hands down, they will be at the proper distance from one another on the bow, okay? Now, the last piece that we have to address is the fact that I am currently in a mixed grip. So the Kakano Kone is in a double overhand grip. So as I step out, I'm going to step out with my left hand, at the same time the bow is going to come down, and I'm going to rotate my right hand here, okay? I'm all set. So the question, however, is, well, what if you get to here and you're slightly off? Maybe you haven't brought your hand up far enough, and you get to here, and you have your right hand at your hip. The left hand is way up here. This isn't quite right. What do you do? How do you fix that? You can fix that as you step out. So if these feel too far apart, as you step down and as you rotate the right hand, you can bring it in just slightly. All set. You're in the right position. So this part here is critical in terms of fine-tuning the distance between your hands. Okay? So you will be here. One, two. This is probably pretty good. I don't think I have to do a whole lot of movement. Step out. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay? Now if I go here. Right, I'm sorry, let me start here. Get to here, two, uh-oh, this is gonna be too high. Okay, as I step out, move the hand in just slightly. Okay, 
That's better. All right. So this piece here is fine tunes it. This piece here helps you set the initial measurement. So this is very important. And in this piece, there's one last element that I want to talk to that is critical. And I see lots and lots of students uh, not pay attention to this, right? And this whole exercise falls apart. This thing that we're doing to set our grip, this doesn't work unless you pay attention to this one thing. So please, please, please pay attention to it. When you are here in this position, for most people, this is uncomfortable, okay? You will feel tension in your forearm, in your wrist, in your hand. This, the hand is not really meant to bend in this way. This is comfortable. This, not so much, okay? Make sure that you don't fall to the temptation of saying, oh, this is uncomfortable. Oh, I'm just going to carry it down here, or I'm going to carry it here. Those are incorrect. That, that will not help. See, look, that will not help you set correctly. I'm way too wide now, okay? So if you make this error and go to here and say, ow, I don't like the way this feels, I'm going to do this instead, and then you step out, too long, too long, by about that much, okay? So make sure, as you get to here, right, make sure that you are not moving your hand because it feels uncomfortable. You don't have to stay here for very long, okay? It's not going to hurt you. It's just uncomfortable. Make sure that your hands are in the proper position on the hip. Step out. Now your hands are good, okay? So that's grip. That's establishing the grip. You'll use this practice when we start a kata um, or when we start a kumibo exercise. Uh, that's really um, gonna, going to be important in terms of setting your grip. Obviously, um, there could be situations where you don't have time or the opportunity to go through those things. Um, grab the bow and go. Uh, in that case, you should, however, you should have had enough practice here that you recognize where the bow is correct for you, okay? So this really is about helping you understand what the bow feels like when your hands are in the proper position um, so that you don't always have to do it, right? So you can get to here, and you're like, that's good, or that's good, that's good, okay? All right, so that is grips and setting uh, the distance between your hands. I'd like to spend a few more minutes now on uh, some of the basic techniques that uh, we're going to use. Uh, how we strike with a bow, how we generate power with the bow. Um, and so um, we'll begin. Okay, so striking surface for the bow, right? See lots of movies with bows smashing into each other, kind of with this whole section here. Um, and that can be fine for blocks, that can be fine for uh, more lateral strikes. Um, this is all useful, okay? For, um, particularly for strikes that are traveling in an arc here. But what we really want to think about is, is projecting the bow in. So if we strike forward, for instance, right? We don't want to just swing, it's not just swinging the bow down. We're bringing the bow down and in. Down and in. So the ridge here, the ridge of the end of the bow, is what you should think about as the desirable contact point that you're using with your enemy, okay, with your opponent. So this piece here is the equivalent of the knuckle on your fist, okay? And um, I want to pause here for a second because there are a number of really important principles from empty hand practice that come into play when we talk about the bow. All right, so the first is going to be hikite. So when we're doing, uh, when we're punching, okay, we're using um, hikite to form a proper punch, right? We should not be pushing with the shoulder, pushing with the arm, right? So we don't want to be going here, okay? Right, that's pushing. That's using all of this. What we want to do is we want to start with the hand that's out. Use hikite, either with the hand explicitly or for more advanced students with just the hip. Okay? But it starts here and not with the hand that's actually punching. So if we pull to generate the punch here. Okay? The same thing's going to be true of bow. Okay? 
Okay, so if we're striking, I'm going to use this overhand strike as an example. We're not going to strike by pushing this hand. Okay, so it's not going to be this. Don't push. Okay, what we're going to do instead is pull. Hikite. Okay, so I'm going to pull here. Okay, and you can see a very different character to the movement of the bow um, between pushing and pulling. Okay, pulling is much sharper. It's much more, uh, and it's much more easy to direct. So as this hand pulls, this hand is going to just kind of focus where it's going to, where the bow is going to end up. Okay, so not really steering, just fine tuning. You'll notice sometimes for me personally, I find it's easier to start with the hands here, very relaxed. And as you position, if you position yourself correctly, the bow will go where it needs to end up here. Okay, so don't have to have a death grip here as I go. You can, not a problem. Or you can start more loosely here, as long as you have gravity on your side, right? And you close up as you do your technique. Okay, so just like empty hand, okay? Pulling rather than pushing. Same thing here, okay? The second element that's very similar to empty hand is the way that the hand travels. So for empty hand, palm is up, makes contact, turns as it drives into the target. Okay, here, here, um, for basics, right? Obviously, obviously there are exceptions to this, but here, here, here. Both hands working together, fist turning at the last second. As we project forward with the bow, we're going to have the same thing happen. Okay? I'm going to pull, and as this comes down, this hand rotates. Okay? Here. So this does two things. Number one, as the bow comes down, okay? As the bow comes down, my, my palm is more up. Okay? If I don't turn it, the bow ends up about here. I want you to pay attention to where the tip of the bow is, okay? So from here, this is palm up, palm up, okay? Now, as I turn my hand, the bow projects another inch or two, okay? So it's speed. Notice where the tip of the bow is compared to before, okay? Here, a little further out. So I'm projecting in, projecting in. Projecting in, okay? That's, that's part of what's going on here with the, with the rotation. The other piece is that we want to make sure that we're setting ourselves up um, to protect our grip on the bow. So if I'm striking downward, right? Down and in, like this, okay? And if I don't turn my hand, if I leave my hand here, okay? As the bow makes contact in this direction, there's a danger that my hand will peel off. Okay? It will come off this way as this strikes. Okay? We don't want that to happen. So as I go to here, as I rotate, as the bow makes contact underneath and jars this way, it drives into the web between my thumb and my forefinger. All right, so that it stays within my grip safely. And this is going to be true for any strike. You always want to have this part of your hand pointed in the direction of the strike. Okay, so as I strike downward, it needs to be here. If I'm striking sideways, here, okay, not here, all right. Um, you want to make sure that in any way, uh, any direction that you move, any direction that you send the bow, the bow, when it hits the target, is driven into this part of your hand, not driven to the gap between your fingers and your thumbs, which will make it peel off, which is not good. Okay? All right. So, again, from here, pulling from hikite, coming down, strike. Okay? Rotate. Okay, let's talk about 
bow position um, back here. The front, that's the front hand. What's the back hand doing? So in general, if we're working chudan, right, this hand is going to be somewhere here. You have a little bit of leeway. I find that myself, if I'm projecting forward, that this hand quite often ends up a little bit forward on the body. Um, not necessarily the best, right? I find it helps me. Um, you want to keep it back a little bit more, ideally. Um, and you want to keep the bow on the body. So as you strike, right, make sure your hand needs to be at least here, can be slightly forward. You don't want it behind your body. See how it doesn't lock? This becomes very loose if you put your hand back here. Make, so make sure it's here or in front of the hip, here or here. It comes up. Bow should be on the body as this completes. Here, okay? Um, Chudan. If you go Jodan, you, may, you can find quite often that you'll end up here, up here. Tuck it right in, solidly here, um, to target, uh, uh, for targets that are higher up on your opponent's body. Okay, so Chudan, Jodan. Okay? All right. Uh, so that's the back side of the bow. Covered grip, mixed, same, or double grip, overhand grip. We've talked about the distance between your hands. We've talked about the role of turning your hand as you do in, uh, in, in empty hand, in te uh, exercises. Okay? It works the same way. We're going to pause here for now. We'll pick up next time with some additional basic bow technique. But this should get you started. Uh, and I hope it's been helpful. Arigatou gozaimashita.